you've prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is right and good and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to the chief priests and Pharisees in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call all those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready, come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burnt their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they had found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. In this morning's Gospel reading, Jesus tells a parable of a king who wants to have a wedding feast for his son. And as a king, he sent out invitations to everyone. In Jesus' day, it took a great deal of preparations to put a feast, a wedding feast together, so that the feast would take some time. And this wedding feast or banquet um, invited a great number of people. But for some odd reason, and we don't really know why that was, those who were invited to this feast simply did not come. And, and the king sent his slaves telling those who had been invited, look, I've prepared my dinner, my oxen and fat calves have been slaughtered, everything is ready, come to the wedding banquet. But again, those who had been invited did not come. They made light of it, some mistreated his slaves, some killed others, and this enraged the king, as it should have, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. And then he told his slaves to Go out into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. And they did that. And they invited both the good and the bad. And so now the wedding banquet was filled with people of every sort and kind, both good and bad. In the midst of the guests, the king came and saw a man who was not wearing a wedding robe. In Jesus' day, a wedding robe was a garment that was made specially for weddings. It was a sign of the wearer's care for the, the people who are being, uh, being held up in adoration, uh, for honoring both the king, in this case, and his son and his son's wife. If you put on a wedding garb in a wedding robe, it showed that you cared for them enough to wear the appropriate clothes. And so the king found someone who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he asked of him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And the man was speechless. And unfortunately, the king said, bind him up hand and foot, throw him into the outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why? Why? This is a king who had been offended by the first people who he had invited to the wedding feast. They had rejected him. And when he had invited them a second time, they went as far as to, to ignore his slaves and to kill them. And so outraged, he destroys them. 
And now he had told his slaves to invite anyone they found, both good and bad, to come to the wedding feast. Why doesn't the parable just end there? It's good news for us all. If it ends right there, everyone's invited to this wedding banquet. Everyone is an honored guest of God. Why? Why does one man who does not wear a wedding robe, why is he treated as the villain, the bad guy in this parable? In Jesus' day, everyone either had a wedding robe or could get one. And if you came without a wedding robe, it's possible even the guest might give you a robe to wear. But this man, somehow, perhaps out of foolishness or wickedness or pride, decides that he's not going to do what everyone else is doing. He's just going to ignore the necessity of a wedding robe. He's going to be himself. Unfortunately, in this parable with dangerous consequences, some Bible commentators have looked at this gospel reading and said, you know, St. Luke is reminding us with this parable that there are some Christians that felt once they followed Jesus, they could do whatever they wanted. The church in Corinth is perhaps a good example. Paul writes to them in his first letter and says to them that they have immoral people in their congregation. There is a man who is living with his father's wife and no one is complaining about it. There are Christians perhaps even in our day who feel that because they believe in Jesus, they can pretty much do whatever they like because Jesus loves me. Well, the truth is, folks, Christ has taught us how to live our lives kindly, humbly, justly, mercifully, graciously. We simply can't do whatever we feel we want to do. And we certainly can't do things that hurt us and hurt people around us. You know, there are Christians out there in the world who use the Bible like they use a weapon. And so they find someone they don't like and they pick up their Bible and they read off some scriptures to them, to those people. And, and they, use it, they use it as though they were going to, to hurt other people with it. I don't like you and I want you to know even the Bible agrees with me. The Bible is not a weapon to hurt others. The Bible is an opportunity to bring healing to others. To understand them and to understand even people who use the Bible as a weapon. Brothers and sisters in Christ, my hope for us as we hear this gospel message is we recognize how fortunate we are to be invited into God's banquet. To be a Christian in a free country. To live out our faith without worrying about persecution. It's a wonderful gift and blessing. But let us not use it in ways that hurt other people unnecessarily or make us feel far better about ourselves than we should be. I think when Christians gather together, we should always pray, and we should pray for others in need, and we should pray prayers of repentance for ourselves. Some of us are too good at being wicked. Some of us are far too foolish at times, and a lot of us think better of ourselves than we should. Let us hear this message that Christ gave to the chief priests and Pharisees, and apply it to ourselves. As Christians, we can do a great many good things. Let us not use our freedom in Christ to do foolish or wicked or hateful things. Thanks be to God. Amen.
us pray. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious host, fill your church with the spirit of hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God, as they invite others to your table of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, creation waits longingly for redemption. Protect all creatures that are mistreated. Restore valleys, mountains, and pastures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, you set up a table in the presence of those who might harm us. Bless the diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, comfort those who are weary, sick, or ill. We especially pray for our President, the First Lady, and all who have contracted COVID-19. We also pray for our friends and relatives whose names are written on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, remind us how you clothe us all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered to share your banquet, assure us of your presence and allow us to find comfort in your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O Lord, and enfold us in your loving arms. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us now pray as our Lord taught his disciples how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor, and give you peace. Amen. Go now in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.